Hey guys, Yem again, and I have made it to chapter 10 of Harry Potter on there. I read it, my little kind of vloggy podcast thing on reading Harry Potter for the first time ever. Chapter 10 is where Harry starts to really learn the rules of Quidditch, which are like, oh my gosh. And then there is a troll in the bathroom on Halloween. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole chapter. Let me open up my notes and tell you some things I thought. Okay, in the last chapter, Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville, I think that was the whole group, they ended up in the third floor corridor room and there was the giant three-headed dog who was guarding a trap door. And so Harry and Ron are kind of speculating on what could be in there and Ron's like, it's either really valuable or really dangerous. My guess is both. Of course, even if I hadn't seen the movies, the title of the book kind of gives that away. Then Hermione kind of re-enters the mix and the book, not either one of the boys even, the book describes her as a bossy know-it-all, which seems like so mean and harsh. All right, I get where Hermione might seem off-putting and she's very excited to prove herself because, you you know, this is a whole new world for her, literally. But it seems like everyone except for Neville is just so like angry with Hermione. Like they have all this disdain for her, like she did something to them. And I don't know, I would get it if I saw more of a side, but if all Hermione is doing is wanting people to follow the rules and correcting people, then isn't she just basically a little prefect? I don't know, maybe the point is it's not her place, so they don't want her correcting them, but it just seems a little extra harsh. Like everybody hates Hermione. Oh, then six Screech Owls specifically come in to deliver one package and then another owl has a letter and it turns out within that package is the Nimbus 2000. Luckily, Harry opens up his letter part first and it's from McGarnagal. Did I get it right in one try? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Uh, it's from McGarnagal and she's saying like, don't let anybody know you have this. First years aren't supposed to have brooms, but you get a special exception kind of thing. So when Harry is trying to go and stash this broom for later so nobody knows he has it, Malfoy catches him in the hall and Ron's like, yeah, you know what? You should be jealous of this broom because all you have is a Comet 260 at home. And so Malfoy's like, I'm going to tell on you. And the teacher, who I think was Professor Flitwick, was like, oh, yeah, hey, cool. No problem. That, that's awesome. You got your broom and your special exception there, Harry. And Malfoy's just like, what? But off they go. This is not a Malfoy heavy chapter. And Harry describes the Nimbus as being mahogany and that I, I think what he's talking about is like the bristle end that it's made of straight twigs. We use straw in the United States. Do people in the UK or Europe use like actual sticks bundled up for their brooms? I don't know. That's a very strange, curious thing to me. Now the rules for Quidditch. <laughs> this is strange. Um, gonna need forever to wrap my head around it. There's seven players on each team. Three of them are chasers who go after a quaffle ball that is red and the size of about a soccer ball. Um, there are keepers who try to stop the balls from going into rings and it's 10 points anytime you get a quaffle through one of the basket hoop ring things. Um, there are bludgers. Then there are beaters, I guess two of them because it says the Weasley twins are the Gryffindor house beaters. And they go after these bludger balls, which are two black balls that are a little smaller than the quaffle. And they just like dart around trying to knock kids off brooms. Lawsuits much? Then the seeker is what Harry is going to be. And those go after a walnut sized golden snitch that has little wings of its own. The snitch is worth 150 points. And once you grab it, the game ends. I mean, that is the official mark of the end of the game. If you don't catch it, uh, it the game goes on forever. They said the longest match they know of was three months long. But then Harry's back in class and they're working on doing levitation stuff. And that's when we get the famous, not Leviosa, Leviosa, however it was she does it. But yeah, Hermione and Ron are paired up. Ron hates it. She corrects him. So Ron's like, nobody likes her. And that just like, that's the last straw for Hermione. She's had people hating on her for so long that just makes her snap. And she's just sobbing. She goes into the girl's bathroom. She doesn't care anymore. She's not coming back out the rest 
rest of the day. Like this is my, my mind's made up. I don't care that it's Halloween and we're having a big party. I'm staying in the bathroom crying. Uh, then Professor Quirrell comes running in saying that there is a troll in the dungeons and they don't really know where it came from. They think maybe Peeves the poltergeist let it in, but they don't know. And the first years are all being marched back to their dorms when Harry and Ron realize, oh no, Hermione doesn't know what's happening. So they kind of break off and sneak away from the group. They see Snape wandering past them and they kind of ignore it, but I feel like that's going to be important later. And they see the troll go into a room, they lock it up in the room, and then they hear a scream and it's like, oh crap, we just locked the troll in the girl's bathroom. So they go in there, find a 12 foot tall gray skinned troll who's described as looking like a boulder in the body with a coconut head and that he smells horrible and drags around this huge club. Now, for whatever reason, Hermione turns up to be worthless here and Harry trying to save her ends up sticking his wand up the troll's nose and Ron, who thanks to Hermione's corrections, may I remind you, is able to say Wingardium Leviosa properly and get the troll's club to levitate long enough to fall back down and clump him on the head. So troll's knocked out, Hermione's safe, McGarnagle and Snape and I think Quirrell come walking into the bathroom like, who knew? And uh, yeah, Hermione takes the blame. She said she went looking for the troll, didn't, I don't, I don't know why she said that. It was a complete lie. They kept emphasizing that they couldn't believe that she lied about it. But you would think she could say, you know, oh, I, I was having an issue and I was in the bathroom. I didn't know we were evacuated and that wouldn't have been a lie. So I don't know why she lied and said, oh, I went looking for the troll to get the other two out of trouble because there really wasn't a scenario where they would have been in trouble in the first place. Even if Hermione said, Ron made me cry so I ran to the bathroom, that's still not Ron's fault that she didn't get that news. But because Hermione takes the credit, she loses five points for Gryffindor and and then when Hermione walks away, McGarnagle gives five points to Harry and five points to Ron for being brave enough to save her. And that's pretty much the end of the chapter. And it's implied that, hey, they're going to be friends now. So I, I don't know that I have a ton of, of thoughts beyond the notes for this chapter. A lot of really dry stuff on Quidditch, which I'm not a big fan of sports to begin with. Now add sports in written format where I have to really visually try to plan this thing out. I, I don't know that I'm going to love the next Next chapter, which I believe is all about Quidditch. Yes, it's entitled Quidditch for chapter 11. Um, but I mean, we'll see. Maybe it's much more exciting once you get into the game and aren't being given the mini tutorial. But yeah, this chapter was a lot harder to read and get through. It was just like, oh man, this is straight up drudgery through all of the, here's a quaffle and a bludger and a snitch. And I was like, oh. And then I just felt so bad for Hermione. Like, I just, I don't understand these kids in this book series where it seems like none of them can get along with anybody. Oh, I never had friends for 10 years, says Harry. Oh, nobody at this whole school likes me, says Hermione. What is going on? These are the kids that should be pairing off together and being friends, which I know that's what's going to happen, or at least it better be what happens because I do not want Hermione to be in a bad space all by herself and isolated. That's not good. Just listen to the girl and move on with your day. It will make your life a whole lot easier as an adult, I promise. But yeah, I had a lot of like sad feels for Hermione and I wish that she had been treated better, you know, in the last two months since Hogwarts has started. But then again, that also makes her more vulnerable and more apt to be a friend now from here on out, even though it's like halfway through the book now. I really would have thought that they all like clicked off right away and that's just, uh, that's not how it worked out. And I think the movie set me up to believe that falsely, that they were all friends from day one. But hey, you guys know me. My preference is to really see female characters in good, thoughtful roles where they have agency and power and contributions. Not just being a girl for the sake of hoping other little girls will follow along, but really contribute and add to the story. And I think Hermione's gonna get there. Hopefully that will be in the next chapter and beyond. But uh, again, we'll see because I, like I said, I've been really surprised with how Hermione's been handled so far. Cause you know what? We know it all's, we're not all bad. We're just a little prickly on the outside. <laughs> like I know anything. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna thank you for watching because I've got the battery dying symbol on and we'll see you next time, family members. Bye! And then when Hermione walks away, McGarnagle... But you guys probably know me. I like it when the girls have some agency and a voice and a personality and, you know, not just... <clears throat> but hey, you guys know me. My preference is to... Try that again.
Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members. Bye.